Uh, good night to the U.S. and good morning to out in Asia on the other side of the world. Uh, here we are. I want to say hello and welcome. Uh, we have notifications going out. We are streaming live via Worldwide through YouTube right now. Uh, hopefully you will be one of our special people in our chat room. Angel, you are our first one in the chat room. Uh, we will allow notifications to go out. I will say hello to Mexico. Hello to my listeners out there. Uh, this program today is going to be about how MRIs can be dangerous. Now, you might be thinking, how are MRIs dangerous? Well, physically, I want you to understand that MRIs are not x-rays. X-rays have radiation. CAT scans is a multitude of x-rays put together that's three-dimensional. And MRIs, from a physical perspective, are not dangerous. I want you to understand this. I know the, the title can be a little misleading, but it's not misleading because when you listen to this program, you're going to understand why I say MRIs can be dangerous. And if you look at the title, it states the truth behind the scenes. Now, doing this type of work, and I have literally seen thousands of patients over several decades, I've had a multitude of of different MRI places and hospitals and centers and businesses come to my business for solicitation so they can get business. Now, I want you to understand about MRI. Now, we're really going to learn a lot because the majority of people, and I really appreciate our chat, chat room here, the majority of you in the chat room most likely have taken MRIs. Why? Because if you have pain, you have any kind of pain, a bulging disc or herniated disc, arthritic changes, ridiculous pain into the arm or the leg or sciatica or even headaches, your doctor most likely is going to send you out for an MRI. So if you look at this, this looks a little familiar. Okay, we've all been through this, including myself. This basically shows the soft tissue. They're looking for soft tissue pathologies. If it's your neck, your back, your shoulder, your knee, it's, they're not looking for heart tissue. Heart tissue generally is more CAT scan, more X-ray. Soft tissue is more MRI. Although, I want to go over some important things that the majority of people who have pain do not come from herniated discs. It do not, does not come from bulging discs, and it does not come from degenerative joint disease. Generally, most people who have pain usually is related to muscles, ligaments, sensory fibers around the area, inflammation, imbalances, poor posture, incorrect uh, uh, ergonomics, uh, cumulative trauma disorders, things that you do every day. These are where most of the pain comes up. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this topic up is because hundreds of emails over the last several years have mentioned to me about doctors wanting to do surgery. Now, before I move into the program, I have to say one very important thing. I, including myself, have been told by a few orthopedic surgeons I need a surgery. The good neurosurgeons said to me, uh-uh, don't get the surgery. Now, it's unusual that the neurosurgeons were clinical professors in the large institutions worldwide well, well recognized. They only get a salary. Their objective is not to really do more because they don't get paid more. I have to let you know that the people who recommend the surgeries the majority of the time are the ones that are out looking for or looking out for themselves. You have to under, understand that. Now, I don't and I don't want you to understand that I'm knocking doctors or I'm knocking all orthopedic surgeons or neurosurgeons. I want you to understand this, is that the most important thing that I want to get through to all of you tonight, and I'm going to move through this, is that if you are told that you need surgery because the doctor looked at an MRI, okay, they looked at the, the MRI, all right, uh, and they're reading the MRI, but they haven't examined you. They haven't thoroughly examined you. They haven't checked the reflexes, checked the motor strength, checked your range of motion, moved you around to determine if the source 
of your problem is really the disc. If the source of your problem is coming from the herniation or the compression on the nerve root. Now, there are so many studies out there, I mean so many, that talk about people who are asymptomatic. A tremendous amount of the population are asymptomatic with herniated discs, bulging discs, degenerative joint disease. A huge amount of the population that never knew they had any problems. Now, what am I getting at? I'm, gonna, I'm getting there, so I don't want to jump the gun. But I want to go back to the surgeon who recommends surgery to you. And unfortunately, you don't want to make the wrong decision because if he operates on something that was not the primary purpose or the primary cause, now you have a second problem that's in trouble. So you potentially had a first problem and now you have a second problem because the surgery was not the, the what was diagnosed. Now, the way to really diagnose if you have a true pathology for an MRI is that that must match the examination. The point I'm tending across to all my listeners out there is that you must be thoroughly examined, thoroughly reflexes, motor strength, range of motion, objective orthopedic and neurologicals. Uh, there are a lot of objective tests that we can do as physicians that can pinpoint and match the diagnosis of what the MRI shows you. Because if you have taken an MRI, and many of you people have, have known this, that your MRI may show three disc herniations in your lower back or two or three or four disc herniations in your neck. They go and do surgery. They do surgery what looks worse to them on the MRI. You cannot conclusively make a diagnosis from an MRI because, because MRIs do not show pain. Please, if you learn, if you learn anything tonight from me, realize that MRIs do not show pain. MRIs are resolution, and MRIs, just when you look at the resolution, like when you have a knee condition, there are other things within the knee that may not show on the MRI until the doctor goes in and says, wow, we didn't see that on the MRI. The same thing that goes with the discs. So when you're looking at reading x-rays, as a, as a physician's reading x-rays, and you see that the cervical disc here shows, you know, a potential bulging or a herniation. If you conclusively show a C5 compression on a nerve, well, that C5 in the shoulder better be weak. If you've got strength in here, you got no atrophy, your reflexes are normal, or you have a C7 tricep, and your C7 nerve roots compressed, and your tricep is strong, you have no atrophy, normal reflex, you are not a candidate for surgery. So I want people to understand that the majority of people who get surgery get it because they cannot withstand the pain. That's the reason why. Not because they're pathologically, uh, because they need it, not because they're atrophying, it's because they can't withstand the pain. Doc, cut it off. Do what you have to do. Be careful. But I want to go back, make sure you're your doctor, spends the time and evaluates you and just doesn't look at the MRI. I've been to doctors myself, brought in my MRIs, looked at the MRI, looked at me, talked to me and said, yeah, we should go ahead and do that surgery. I looked at him. I said, wait a second. I said, I teach this kind of stuff. I learn this stuff. I know this stuff probably better than you do because of my conditions that I had. And I had to do my homework and do my research. And I'm here sharing it with you out of my heart and teaching you the right things to do because I had to learn it. So if I had to learn it, I sure want you to learn it. I don't want you making the wrong decision. Okay, so that shows a cervical MRI. Here's a lumbar MRI. You can see here a herniated disc. You can see normal disc on the left, but that herniated disc may not probably need surgery. There, again, there are so many of my patients over the years who have serious disc problems and only maybe 1%, 2% ever needed surgery. That teaches you that the body has remarkable ability, a remarkable powers to repair and heal by doing proper rehabilitation and therapy. So I wanted to bring that out to you. And the next thing, now there are so many studies, they talk about the New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, they found 
82% of the study participants who were pain-free with positive MRI results. 82% pain-free, positive MRI results. That means they may have a lumbar disc, a protrusion, extrusion, or whatever it was. The point I'm saying is you cannot let that pain from the MRI tell you what you need to do without examination. That's one of the most important things I wanted to share with you. Now, the other important thing I wanted to share with you is this. And this is what made me want to share this whole message with you tonight. When you look at MRI, we know that MRI is not the identity or cause of pain. The majority of people who have pain, as I said, have poor flexibility, have inflammation, loss of strength, loss of muscle balance, inflammation, if cumulative trauma disorder, poor postural habits, which I'll go into this in just a second. But this is the kicker that I wanted to share with all of you right now. I want you to know that the majority of doctors that take MRIs on patients, this is just a test. This is a test, a randomized test that so many people do it among the whole entire world. It's a random test. Okay, so a lot of patients will say, well, doc, I want an MRI because I want to know what's going on in my back. But here's the kicker. When the MRI comes back and the MRI shows nothing, these people seem to do very well, even though they have pain. On the other study, when the MRI comes back and the MRI shows conclusive problems like a herniated disc or degenerative joint disease or degenerative disc disease or a bulging disc or whatever it may be, these people psychologically have this anxiety, this full of anxiety. Let's move on here. Okay. You get this confusion. Now you have something. You have to live with it. Now you're still confused. You don't know what direction to take. You have this fear because we know that fear is a liar. You have this disem disempowerment of fear now, okay, that you really don't know what to expect. You start looking up all your fears. Now you have doubt because we know that the doubt is just ahead and you start having this. We know that now you're like a fear in a prison because you think that you have something that is going to take your life apart and ruin you. You must stay calm. I'm here to tell you, you must stay calm. This is just an obstacle that you have to face. Everyone faces it somewhere in their life. You have to let yourself know that faith is obviously bigger than your fears. And that's probably the most important thing I'm going to share with you, is you have to have faith, and your faith must be bigger than your fears. Because just because the doctor did something and you know something, right now you're letting your adrenaline and you're letting your whole life go upside down because of something that's there. And I'm here to share it with you that millions of people have these things and don't even know it. And I'm here to tell you that because you have this particular problem from the MRI, I'll guarantee that the majority of the people, that's not the primary source of why you're having problems. Now you look at conditions like sacroiliac, imbalance of the pelvis, that can cause pain just like a herniated disc, if not worse. We look at conditions like piriformis syndrome. When that piriformis muscle squeezes on that sciatic nerve, pain down the leg, tingling, numbness, cramping. We look at people with poor posture, rounded shoulders, anterior forward head posture. For those new people who just tuned in with me, check my channel out. Look through those videos, those self-help videos, those poor posture videos, forward head posture, pronated shoulder, thoracic outlet syndrome. Look at my videos. They'll teach you a lot and they'll help you get well by doing right exercises. So we have to understand that MRIs do not show pain. So that's how MRIs are dangerous. They're putting fear into people's minds. The, your condition, I can promise you, if you start doing the right thing, strengthening core, working on your posture, working on your imbalances, the agonistic, the antagonistic, the concentric muscles, the eccentric muscles, there is a lot to do in your body. It's like anything else. We have to do our homework. We have to research. I see a lot of names out there. 
over and over because you are proactive. You people are going to get better. You, you may have a weakness like we all have weaknesses. It's like having a dent in your car. It's like having an old engine. You still have to preserve it. You still have to take care of it. You must take care of it. Do not let someone take care of you, particularly if it's the wrong thing that they're doing because it can leave you the permanent disability, permanent pain, permanent problems. The brain has ways of compromising, compensating, getting used to things. Don't think that the pain is just going to make your head burst because it won't, but the anxiety and the fear will. The adrenaline, the cortisol, that stuff will make your problem worse. You can look at our videos, talk and go through them. There's so many beautiful things you can learn here. But that was my message for you tonight. That made me feel good. It released a lot of anxiety from me because people really need this. You guys need the love. You guys need to understand. I'm telling you, I know so much about this, not because I learned it in school. I have my issues, my problems, but I'm persevering. I work at it just like you. We're no different. Okay? You can look at me and you think, oh, hey, you, I look great. People say, but you know, I have my injuries. I was a, I was a rugged athlete. I was, uh, I was ranked in, in the, the top in, 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 in tennis in the southeastern United States when I was 18 years old. So, you know, I had my, my, my sports. I've done my things. I've, play, I, I've, I've worked with my occupational stresses of manipulating and adjusting thousands and thousands and thousands of bones. It's, it's physical. It's like, it's like a worker chugging along all day long. It's like a typist doing this all day long. It's like a driver with vibration, cumulative trauma disorder, typing with, with, with carpal tunnel syndrome. No matter what we do in life, we have to learn something. We have to learn that the things that bother us, it's like if you're a runner, you need to stop running if, you're, if you have knee problems. The things that bother you are the things you got to be bright. You got to understand you need to stay away from those because you need to preserve your body. You have a whole lifetime. You know, I always say, and I'm going to end up with this, people, um, ladies and gentlemen, not people. Um, if you wear out your washer or dryer or if it breaks your refrigerator, you can replace the parts. Your, 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 your freezer or whatever, you can replace the parts. Your car, you can replace the, car, the parts. Your teeth... You can get substitutes. But if you wear out your body, where are you going to live? That's a big question you need to ask yourself. And I think if you understand that, that will give you a little bit better perspective on what you're doing. Because eating well, nutrition, and, and the programs we put on with all the nutrition, so much great feedback because you are trying to take care of yourself. This is your castle. We need good nutrition to heal. You just can't go to doctors. You just can't get surgery and cut if you don't put the nutrition in. You need to repair. You need to heal. You need to, you know, you are an organism. You are a human being. You need to repair with the proper nutrition, the proper nutrients, the proper vitamins, the minerals, and the proper mind. Okay? So... I want to send my love to all people out there, and I really appreciate you, you being in here with us. I'm, I'm sure that this video is going to make a dent out there, and I ask you to please share this, as well as subscribe if you haven't, because I would love for you to join our chat rooms, come look at our videos, share our videos, put them on your, on your social media. You don't have to ask me. There's no magic about this. This is all about love, and that's it. There's a lot of people out there pulling strings to try to get people to do things for them, there's no strings here. This is all about love. I want to help you guys. Um, I know what it's like. I've been there. And my, my goal and my mission out there is to really touch lives out there. And we're doing it. We're doing it because our, our videos are getting put up on top. YouTube's recognizing the good work we're doing. And I want to thank you for people like you who are making it happen. Anyways, I want to say uh, good night for those in the U.S. And uh, good morning, good day. Have a great day for those overseas. God bless everyone. And we'll be with you real soon. Bye-bye now.